Hello. Here on this third Sunday of Advent, we're going to be hearing the Word of God from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 1, and verses 39 through 45. Let us hear His Holy Word. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country. When she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me? The mother of my Lord comes to me, for as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child, who we know as John the Baptist, leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And may the Lord bless the reading of his holy word today. Leaping for joy is what we're looking at this day. There are many circumstances that cause people to leap for joy. I'm sure that you can think of many. We often go to the arena of sports, sports fans, certainly can be found leaping for joy when one of their team's players makes an outstanding play or scores, whether it's a goal in a hockey net, in a basketball hoop, on a football field, a volleyball spike, whatever sport it happens to be, there is great joy and many people leap upon their feet to cheer on their team leaping for great joy. You may see crowds of 40, 50, even 100,000 of people leaping for joy just as if it was choreographed because they're excited to cheer on their team. Today, we should be excited too because excitement is contagious. We leap for joy many times in our hearts and our minds. We leap for joy, not just for sports, but we leap for joy when maybe we got that first job, our, our first car, or when the love of our life said, yes, they also loved us. We also should be leaping for joy over the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Christ in each of our lives is an exciting thing. And we need to be more excited about it, more willing to share that joy with others, to celebrate that Christ is in your life so that they too might become excited. Because when they hear your personal story, it becomes real to them. And so continue to share that personal story of yours, that story of faith, so that others might come to know Jesus as you do. Today, our text tells us about the great joy that is shared by Elizabeth, Mary, and of course, John the Baptist leaping for joy in a womb Elizabeth and Jesus Christ being present. The great joy is a Christmas celebration. Could you imagine being in that room of that feeling that both Mary and Elizabeth had as well as the babies who they were carrying? They both were blessed by God. Elizabeth, a bit aged, but yet her and Zachariah's prayers were answered. And she was carrying a child, a risky endeavor for somebody of her age. Very dangerous. And there is Mary, yet a teenage girl. One that many might say, too young. But God chose both of these wonderful women, saintly women, to bear these very special children, John and Jesus. The birth of Jesus indeed is an event worthy of great celebration. Our churches throughout our tri-state area are going to be having great celebrations about the birth of Jesus. There are going to be some live enactments undoubtedly 
over this celebration. There will be choirs singing glorious songs, church folks joining in anthems of praise. And we should be celebrating with those that are lifting up the name of Jesus. Christmas, indeed, is an exciting time. It is the epicenter of the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. That's what it's all about. It's more than the beautiful Christmas tree. It's more than the beautifully wrapped presents. It is the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. The fact that we've been saved, the fact that we've been redeemed by the perfect one by the only one that could redeem us. We get a picture of this scene in our text today. We see Mary visiting her cousin, walking into her cousin's house. Mary had learned about her cousin's situation by the angelic visitor that she had as well. So in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, there goes Mary going to see her cousin. And as Mary greeted Elizabeth, we know that the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. The unborn child is prophetically aware of the unborn Messiah in Mary's womb. Isn't that exciting to hear that the two unborn children they were beings, and they were creations of God's grace and of God's blessings upon our world, let alone upon their moms and their earthly dads. Elizabeth proclaims the joy that has filled her and exclaimed that Mary, our younger cousin, was blessed among women. Why, they're happy. And they should be happy. Their words are full of joy. Their circumstances, to many, were not joyous circumstances. Sometimes it's hard to find joy in the midst of strange times. Yet Mary and Elizabeth, they find joy, even in some rather unorthodox times for them. Many found Elizabeth to be socially disgraced because she had been barren for so long. Now, how could she be with child? There's only one answer for that, isn't it? By the grace of God, by his abundant mercy and by his answering prayer. Sometimes our prayers are not answered when we want them, are they? Sometimes it takes years before God answers our prayers. And that's exactly what happened in Elizabeth and Zachariah's life. Mary, her time was hard too. She's facing a society that still had a stigma about a young girl. And remember, a betrothed girl being a child. We still have that kind of stigma and still look at people awkwardly when that happens. But yet they're happy. Why are they happy? Going back to that question. Well, they're happy because they know that God is at work in their lives. And when God is at work in our lives, we need to be happy. We need to be praising him and we should be joyous. The challenges that they are facing are a part of God's larger plan. And it was nothing beyond what they could handle. God knew what they could handle, and God would provide the strength to them and to their husbands for what was ahead. Their faith, just as your faith, helps you to overcome troubles, helps you to overcome difficulties, helps you to overcome those who doubt what is really going on, those who doubt the truth. This is not fake news. This is real news, and it's exciting news that is going on. They would indeed overcome 
They would overcome society. They'd overcome what others were saying. And God would bring hope and joy because he does not abandon his children. God does not abandon us. He will never abandon you. You may forsake him, but God will never, ever forsake you. God uses some unique circumstances and some unique people in these situations. We see that he uses a young girl, an older woman. He uses a carpenter. He uses a speechless priest. He uses the socially outcast shepherds. God uses all kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life when they're ready to serve him. Are you ready to serve him today? Or are you already serving him? Praise God if you are. But if you're not, find a place of service. Find a place to share the joy of God with others. This Christmas season, this Advent season, is all about God coming in unexpected ways. God is always present. We just need to be looking for him. Today, are you leaping for joy? Not secular joy, but do you have spiritual joy in your life? I pray that each of us can proclaim boldly, yes, I've got that spiritual joy. May God's grace be with you and let us pray. Our Lord God, we thank you for this time. You allowed us to join together to to share a familiar passage of the Christmas story. And we ask you help us to truly be leaping for joy for spiritual matters. Bless each one. Watch over and keep us all. In the name of Christ we ask. Amen. Thank you again for allowing me to be a part of your day. May God's richest blessings abide upon you. And may he fill you with the joy of Christmas. Not just during this Advent season but throughout the year. Amen.